Hello everyone, MP Hater here, and welcome back to my newcomer's guide to Dark Souls Remaster. This is part 16. In the last episode, we ended up helping Sigmire, who was in Firelink Shrine. Um, once we met him again in Blight Town, we also ended up killing Shiva, as well as his lackey, uh, who were members of the Forest uh, Hunter's Covenant. We also ended up going down into the New Londo Ruins and kind of completed the first major section of it. And we're about to head to the Valley of the Drakes to complete the second. Um, that being said, remember that we got to have a few items uh, for the upcoming boss battle. Green Blossoms wouldn't be a bad idea at this phase because, again, we want to have uh, a high stamina recovery for the boss battle. I uh, want to make sure we got Charcoal Pine Resin, Gold Pine Resin. Either ore is fine for the boss battle. Uh, we want to make sure that we have... The Eagle Shield, because this will help us deal with the electrical damage that we're going to be facing uh, for the dragons or drakes that we're going to be running into. But other than that, that's going to be the main gear that we're going to need for this, uh, this upcoming section. For now, though, let's go ahead and head downstairs. come out here head up here and again this door we opened up with the master key in episode one though you could also get the new Londo ruins key uh, over in uh, blight town came out here in episode one and also grabbed a soul item for now though we're gonna head across this bridge and make a left now up ahead of us is an undead dragon they do not respawn And they're not really that hard as long as we know how to bait the correct attacks out of the enemy, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to two-hand for this. We're basically going to wait for him to do that attack. Uh, you'll notice how his hand is going to move uh, between two positions. I usually will run over as his hand moves one way. And then we're gonna run this way. Rinse and repeat. So this will kind of ensure that he doesn't do his swipe attack very often. Be careful, by the way, his hand movements can knock you off. And there's the swing. <laughs> that being said, he's almost dead. So usually you can get a bait, get him, get him to, uh, uh, do the same attacks over and over. Uh, anyway, we got a dragon scale. We also have the Astora Straight Sword. This is a faith-based weapon. Uh, we have the Dragon Crest Shield. This gives you the highest fire reduction in damage uh, that we've had so far for a shield. And then here we here we have a soul item. Uh, before we move down further, we're going to go and switch off to the Eagle Shield because we're going to be dealing with some drakes. So these drakes will spit electricity. They'll also fly into the air and spit electricity. Uh, they'll also fly into the air, put out their talons, and uh, come towards you. Um, kind of like an eagle does whenever it's getting prey. Uh, they'll also do a bite directly in front of them. So, 
We're gonna top off. And usually they will do the electrical damage attack right as we approach them. So two hand, hit them from the side is what I recommend. They have terrible poise, so a couple hits will interrupt them. And then in here we have a humanity. getting a dragon skill for our trouble. That's kind of nice. Uh, got another one here. There is his attack. Uh, this, by the way, is the brigand, brigand gear. Brigand gear. It also includes the um, spider shield. So you haven't got. If you didn't get that in the depths, then we'll get it here. No, come on, get closer. more forward and you'll get another one coming to you. Oh, you're not going to come to me anymore? I don't like to fight them on the skinny portion of the bridge. If I can avoid it. one more. So we're going to head up here for the red tear stone ring. Uh, this, by the way, will end up giving you higher attack whenever you are low on health. It's kind of the same thing as what the um, blue tear stone ring gives you. Anyway, we're going to come in here. This is the uh, flooded section of the new Londo ruins now. And yeah, we got one of these Dark Wraith Knights coming towards us. The same one as we had in the last episode. And I totally forgot to switch out my gear. Oh well. I'll deal with them first and then switch it out. Anyway, backstabs are good. They drop Titanite chunks. Always good. Um, let's see. I'm going to do the silver. Actually, I'll, I'll do Havel's gear for now, actually. I'm going to swap out, I think, uh, though, during the boss battle. So I got Havel's ring, and we'll go ahead and switch over to the Crest Shield. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and head up.
inside here. Don't get the item because there's another Dark Wraith enemy. We're going to get him to follow us into a more open area. Hey, tighten a chunk. Cool. Large soul item. So uh, in here, we got a fog door. There are three of the dark wraiths. Um, we're going to kind of head towards here. And you'll notice that you can lock onto one of them. We're going to bait him over here. So there's one on our left. I usually like to kill this guy next. And we are being attacked by this thing. Has quite a bit of poise. You'll have to do almost half of his health in quick succession to uh, break his poise, but that'll make the um, thing that he spits out of his tongue uh, go back in. Anyway, the uh, third of these guys is over here. Uh, next, we're going to head over here. There is a humanity here. And we're going to go in here and head up the staircase. So at the end here, we have a soul item. Come over here, make a left. Make another left. Make a right, just kind of follow the path, and eventually you're going to come across a staircase. There we go. So the staircase is going to go up, and then turn around. And we have the very large ember now. Uh, we're going to want to give this to Andre. He will be able to now level our gear up to uh, plus 15. If you're having trouble with this fight, by the way, that we're about to do with the boss, this is probably the first thing I would recommend is uh, going over to uh, Andre and giving him this and then leveling up your Claymore. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and head back. Did I miss it? Yeah, I did. All right, so we're going to go back down the staircase, head out, and we're going to make a right. And then this actually opens up another shortcut. So if we head up here, this will actually take you to uh, kind of the entrance to, what do you call it? Where, where all the ghost enemies are. Anyway, with that, though, we're going to go ahead and head out. We're going to head right. So we got another one of these things to deal with. Grab another soul item.
Up here we have a large soul item. Around here, follow this path. For a large soul item. We'll drop down here. Then we're going to head over here for a cracked red eye orb. Head down this path, you're going to run into another one of these uh, Dark Wraith Knights. I missed that. Oh well. Anyway, last thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this. This leads to another one of these knights. And then there's a titanite chunk at the end of that path. Now we're going to go up the staircase all the way. And you've got a couple enemies who are going to come towards you. I recommend starting in this uh, area. Ooh. Kind of bait this enemy here. Go ahead and stab him. Sometimes we're able to avoid getting uh, hit by the, or get it, getting attacked by both enemies at the same time. Anyway, I did uh, see a uh, spirit enemy there, so I'm gonna go ahead and equip one of those. So he will spit those things out, by the way. You can interrupt his attempt to spit them out if you attack him enough. There we go. Thankfully, these blob things don't respawn, so... Anyway, we're going to head in here, and in one corner there is a chest. Oh, we got another one. Then we're going to head out here, and there is our boss door. We're going to head to the right, though. Okie dokie. So, we are not human right now. However, if you are, there will be a summon pad right here for Beatrice. She's the uh, NPC who helped us with the Moonlight Butterfly boss fight. And she will help us with the fight against the um, Four Kings. However, we haven't really run into it as a problem as of late, but... All of the enemies that we've fought actually grow harder whenever you are uh, bringing in company. Uh, whether that be an NPC like uh, Solaire or Beatrice, um, or a summon in the form of a real person. It actually increases the enemy's health. And in my opinion, Beatrice does not make this fight easier. She actually makes it much harder. So um, I'm going to recommend that you don't worry about being human for this fight. Uh, don't worry about summoning her. We're just going to go ahead and do the fight. Now, there are kind of two ways that you can approach this fight. 
Um, you can go in with uh, full Havel gear. A lot of people like to do this. I'm actually going to go ahead and use... Or equip, I should say. Uh, some of the items we're going to need. We're going to go for the uh, charcoal pine resin. The gold pine resin. Uh, let's do the green blossoms. Let's switch out our shield for the... Brass Crest Shield. And you kind of have a decision that you can make here. Uh, you can go with Havel's gear. And in my opinion, if you are underpowered at this stage of the game, uh, this can definitely be the difference between winning and losing. Um, the caveat, though, is you're not going to be able to use Havel's ring. So you're going to be incredibly slow. Uh, your stamina recovery is much slower than it otherwise should be in Havel's gear. Um, Likewise, you'll be running a lot slower as well without Havel's ring. Of course, if you don't care about the ring of favor and protection, that's fine. Um, in which case, you can de-equip that. But you're going to have to equip the Covenant of Ortorius because you will not survive once we step through here and drop down into the boss arena. So, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and equip the Silver Knight gear instead. Because that will make me fast. Um, and then, of course, I'll get the extra boost of uh, stamina recovery for the Grass Crest Shield, as well as the Green Blossom. Uh, this enemy, by the way, whenever they uh, uh, appear, um, they're going to start off with one of them. And uh, the area that we're in is completely black. So probably the biggest thing for a lot of people initially with this fight is you're not really sure how large the boss is or how close they are, but they are huge. So you need to get right up on them because um, depth perception is really weird in this boss fight. So just remember that they are very, very large, much, much larger than you. <laughs> so if they appear very small uh, or even your size, you're not close enough to them. So uh, be aware of that. Uh, beyond that, though, he does several different slash types. He'll do... Uh, a slash type that does magic damage. He'll do um, slashes that do physical damage. Uh, I think the wiki actually says that uh, the slash attacks, the physical damage you get from the slash attacks are worse whenever you're farther away. So we want to get close to the enemies as possible. We generally want to stay along the um, uh, right side of the enemy or their left in this case so that we can circle around them because they are right handed. So uh, that'll help us with avoiding some of the more deadly attacks. Uh, there are two particularly deadly attacks you want to watch out for. Uh, one of them uh, will have them spin around and then they will grab you. And that will both do a lot of damage as well as it will suck humanity away from you. So uh, that's a big deal. In addition, they will also do another spinning attack. They'll charge up and you'll see the energy charge up whenever they do that and uh, they'll do an explosive attack. We want to have our shield out um, whenever whenever they do that attack. Otherwise, the thing to remember about this fight is um, we're going to end up having one enemy to start with, and we need to kill the enemy as quickly as possible. And the total damage that we do against the enemy will reduce the entire bar. However, each of the individual enemies that we kill um, is basically just a single enemy. So we're going to kill one enemy. Um, if we don't kill him fast enough, we'll have a second enemy. We need to kill, keep trying to kill the first enemy before we get moved to the second enemy. And once we do a total amount of damage equal to the life bar of the boss, regardless of how many enemies we're facing, um, at that point, the, the fight will end. So the biggest thing about this is DPS per second, um, or DPS, yeah, uh, Damage per second is super important in this fight, so we want to go in with uh, the best that we can do. Now, if you're having struggles with this fight, you can go get your Claymore up to plus 15 now, and uh, that'll make this even easier. But we should be fine with this particular gear. Uh, I am going to go ahead and top off. I'm going to do it with a Humanity, however. That way I have plenty of Estus Flasks to use for this fight. Um, beyond that, we're going to go ahead and step in. And we're going to go ahead and drop.
Once we're on the ground, I'm going to equip that pine resin and run towards the boss. His slashes will produce uh, magic damage. We're going to block this. And now we are right on the enemy. And as you can see, they mostly do chip damage to us. There's the second one. I'm going to top off my health. First one is dead. As you can see, electrical damage is super effective. There's the next one. That's the attack we want to block. And there's the next one, and hopefully the last. And he's dead. So now we got the bequeathed Lord Soul Shard, a humanity and a whole mess of souls. So this is Kaith. Um, this is basically kind of a decision that you have to make. You can either side with him. He's basically kind of trying to pit you towards the dark side of, uh, of the ending which isn't explicitly bad if you follow kind of the uh, lore of the game. Both of the serpents in this game are basically trying to manipulate you, as are the gods, and you're basically given two different endings. Both of them have sucky parts to them, as well as both of them have good parts to them. So kind of your decision on which path to take. But if you talk to this guy, you'll lock yourself out of talking to the other guy, which is uh, the other serpent. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and light the bonfire. And we'll go ahead and rest. And let's kind of talk real briefly before we wrap up the episode about the choice here. So... Excuse me. So uh, if we talk to him, we have the ability to join the Dark Wraith Covenant. Uh, which is actually what I'm going to recommend doing. I recommend the dark darkness ending as opposed to the light to the uh, kin, to, uh, to the link to flame ending. And uh, that's because you can talk to him, you can do join the Dark Wraith Covenant, and you can get some of the benefits of that. Uh, once you New Game Plus, by the way, you'll still be a member of that covenant through New Game Plus. Uh, and at that point, you can go ahead and do the other ending, which will normally cut you off from being in the Dark Wraith Covenant. So. That's a consideration to make. One of the benefits of the Dark Wraith uh, Covenant is that you'll be able to get lots of humanity because you'll be given a Dark Hand, just like the enemies that we've been facing had. And so you can steal that from NPCs as well as from enemies that have humanity. However, if you pick the other serpent, uh, who is named Frampt, 
this is Kaith, by the way. Uh, Framped is the other serpent, and uh, he will allow you to sell him some of the items that you have in the game. However, he usually gives you a pittance on them, like 50 souls, 100 souls on some of the items, so in most cases it's not worth it, um, other than to sell him some of the souls. Some of the boss souls will actually give you uh, more souls than if you just simply use them. So, in my opinion, it's almost pointless to go with the light, light uh, ending, and at the very end of the game, you can still pick which option you want to pick. It's just that choosing between the serpents, um, you're not going to be able to go back on your decision for the serpents. So I'm going to go ahead and unequip the covenant now. You don't need to have it anymore uh, equipped for this area. And I'll go ahead and re-equip Havel's gear. And don't need any of this anymore. And I'll switch back to my crest shield. And let's go talk to Kaith. So he'll tell you a little bit about what his goal is. He also tells you about Frampt, who uh, who wants the uh, the uh, the light ending. So go ahead and say yes to him, and he's going to eat you. And uh, he's going to take you over to where we can uh, drop the Lord Vessel. So this is actually the Kiln of the First Flame. This is the final area of the game. However, we got to go get uh, a lot more souls to fill this uh, Lord Vessel. So we're going to go ahead and place the Lord Vessel. This also becomes a save point slash bonfire. Safe point, I should say. Not really a save point. So now if we go talk to Frampt, who uh, you'll actually find in the Firelink Shrine, uh, he will basically just go away telling you that you're a fool. <laughs> that, by the way, leads to Nito, one of the bosses. That leads to the Duke's Archives and to Seath the Scalus, one of the bosses. And that leads to um, uh, Lost Isleth and a couple of bosses, in fact. Bed of Chaos being the main one. Otherwise, though, we can rest at the bonfire. We can offer uh, the soul that we've gotten so far to the fire, and then we're going to go ahead and go talk to Kaith again. So Kaith is going to uh, tell us about what we need to do next, and he's going to teleport us back to the abyss. Talk to him again, and he's going to ask if you want to join his covenant. We're going to say yes. So again, before you do this, you want to make sure that you've done the Forest Hunter stuff that I talked about in the last episode. Uh, because otherwise doing this abandons that covenant and it incurs a sin, which you'll have to solve before you can... Um, or you'll, you'll have to go to Kareem, Oswald of Kareem, in order to get him to absolve you of your sins. Anyway, we get the Dark Hand, which is pretty cool. So the whole idea behind uh, his covenant is uh, you can ask for a covenant item and you can buy uh, cracked red-eye orbs. Um, cracked right hour orbs allow you to invade another uh, world. However, the caveat is they are single-use items. However, if you offer him humanity from the um, pool that you already have, or if you collect them using the Dark Hand, again, you can grab NPCs and other enemies that carry humanity and uh, steal it from them. And if you do that, he'll eventually give you a uh, uncracked version of the Red Eye Orb that you can just simply keep reusing. Um, anyway, so he has uh, various things that you can get by giving him more and more humanity. Uh, otherwise, though, uh, we can talk to him, find out a little bit more about what's going on. Otherwise, though, we're going to go and warp. And I'm going to go ahead and head back to Firelink Shrine, where we're going to wrap out this episode.
Alrighty, so at this point we have wrapped out this area. We have beaten the Four Kings boss. We've gotten all the items in the New Londo Ruins as well. We've also finished the uh, Valley of the Drakes area too. Uh, from here we got several different paths that we can go to, but we're already getting long in the tooth on the time on this episode, so we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Until then, though, thanks everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.